Many of our clients see no value in performance measurement. Do you have any ideas as to how we might convince them of their importance? Interesting that you should mention this. I was recently in China where I heard the same thing from both custodians and asset managers. First, let's think about sports. What if we never kept track of how players are doing in, for example, ping pong? Would anyone have any interest in watching a game where there was no score? Or with basketball? What if we never kept track of the points? Baseball is renowned for its myriad of statistics, but what if none were taken? How would we know who was doing a good job? I see your point, but many of our clients are mainly concerned with their profit and loss. If they made money, they're happy. If they lost money, then they're upset. Isn't that sufficient? Well, consider this. Let's say that Mr. Anderson gives manager A 100,000 to invest, while Mrs. Brown gives manager B 1 million. At the end of the year both individuals earn 10,000. Do you think they should be equally happy? Well, it's clear that manager A did better than manager B, but we wouldn't know that unless we measure the return, right? Correct. Now let's consider this scenario. Let's say that an investor starts the year with 100,000. After six months their portfolio is worth 150,000. They then give the manager another 850,000. At the end of the year the portfolio is at 800,000. What is their profit and loss situation at the end of the year? Well, they made 50,000 during the first half and lost 200,000 during the second, so they have a net loss of 150,000, right? Correct. So would they be happy or mad at their manager? Well, they would be unhappy, of course, since they've lost money. But is this justified? Can you calculate the rate of return for the two periods in the year? Yes, I read Dave Spaulding's new book, so I know how to calculate returns. For the first half, we began with 100,000 and ended with 150,000, so we have ending value divided by beginning, minus 1, so our return for the first half is positive 50%. For the second half we began with 1 million and ended with 800,000. The formula is 800,000 divided by 1 million, minus 1, which gives us a negative 20%, right? Yes. And for the full year? We have to chain link or compound hour to individual period returns, by adding 1 to each, multiply them, and then subtract 1, our result is a positive 20%. That is correct. Recall that we use time waiting to eliminate the impact of external cash flows, which are controlled by the client. In this case our client chose to add money just before there was a downturn. The manager should not be penalized for this. If the client only relies on P&L, the manager might be fired. However, that might be unfair since the manager had a positive return. Why do you qualify your statement by saying, quote, might be unfair? Well because the return we're seeing is an absolute one. We might be interested in seeing performance on a relative basis. Great. Can we talk now about absolute versus relative? No. Let's save that for part two. We've already covered a lot for today. Okay. And can we also talk about how we might explain to the client why the return makes sense when they lost money? Sure. In part three, okay? Sounds like a great plan. Thanks. You're welcome.